Howdy, this is the old gunsmith. Uh, just uh, we're starting a series here on uh, the tools you will need to get started on working on your guns or gunsmithing in general. We'll go over some general uh, tools, some thoughts, some ideas, some considerations that you should have when you're uh, picking your tools or making your bench. And uh, there'll be a series of them. So I hope you enjoy them and let's get started. Hello, 45 Alpha Charlie Papa channel, and today we're here with the old gunsmith and we're just going to go over some tips and tricks for any inspiring gunsmith or tabletop gunsmith you likes to work on your stuff at home. Uh, just some stuff to make a little things easier for you, some stuff he's learned over the years. How you doing? Uh, glad to be with you guys again. I uh, wanted to sit down and talk a little bit about basic tools. Uh, everybody when they first getting looking at getting into gunsmithing or working on their own guns doesn't know what they need. So I thought, you know, we all start out with whatever tools we have around the house. And a lot of them are, are going to come in very handy. For example, a hacksaw. If you're going to do any metal work at all, you're going to be using a hacksaw. You probably already have one of those. So there's your first gunsmithing tool. Uh, other than that, we give, have some considerations I'll send your way. The one thing about gunsmithing is everybody has their own opinion. And whatever I tell you, somebody's going to tell you that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. That's all right. <laughs> they can have their opinion. I have mine. Yeah, well, over the years, this is the stuff that's just worked This is the stuff that worked for me, exactly. Uh, first, we want to talk a little bit about the bench. Uh, most people don't give the bench much thought. Uh, I have given it some, probably not as much as other people. But nonetheless, a couple of things about it. First of all, the depth. Make it about two feet deep. Why? Because the back of the bench tends to, gener to accumulate garbage <laughs> tools. And things that get shoved back there, things you use re fairly regularly. Um, and the deeper it is, the more junk you'll have back there. So uh, two feet will give you about enough room to have some stuff back there and yet enough working room. As far as height is concerned, you really have to make a decision. Are you planning on working sitting down or standing up? Okay, if you're going to work sitting down, uh, you can work on your kitchen table. Uh, sitting in a, in a chair, and that's fine. There, there's nothing wrong with that. There's just a lot of jobs that are very hard to do from a sitting position. I can't imagine how I could file straight sitting. So when I set up my bench, I simply stood here and I went, what's elbow height? Elbow height for me turns out to be about 42 and a half inches. That way when I work, I'm working right here. I'm not working down here. I'm not bent over. After five or six hours working on guns here, my back isn't killing me because I'm standing here upright and everything is right here. So that's a second consideration you might give when putting together your bench. Uh, one other one is you want it to be extremely solid. You want it to be as immovable as possible. Bolt it to the wall. If you notice here, I've got two sheets of three-quarter inch plywood that was were cut in half and laid on here and then I put a white uh, laminate on the top. Why a white laminate on a gunsmithing table? As you can tell it doesn't stay white very long, it gets chipped up but a uh, coat of paint will cure that. The reason for a white top is it's real easy to find screws, pins, and eclipse and springs that go astray and they do go astray <laughs> as you're disassembling. It's, if you've got a dark top it's a lot harder to find the stuff. It just it stands out if it's if you have a, a white top. So I, I went with a white top, and as I said, a, a uh, coat of paint, and it'll be white again. This one right now is like 15 years old, so it's it's got its battle scars. Um, that's probably the most important things you want to know about benches. Uh, it's nice to have storage, and there's storage underneath here. You might. Uh, want to put doors on it or put drawers in it uh, so that it stays neat looking. It depends on how much of a neat neck you are. I'm not. <laughs> and I have some, some drawers here. These came off of um, an old sewing machine cabinet, believe it or not. And to me, they're extremely handy. All my punches are in this drawer. My calipers are in this drawer. I've got some screw starters in here. On the other side, my needle files and uh, my checkering files and in the bottom one uh, I haven't found anything that needs to go in there yet but sooner or later we might uh, so again when you're thinking about the bench think about how high you want it 
how it will be comfortable for you to work at. And as you notice behind mine, I've got again a white uh, painted board, uh, pegboard, and with my screwdrivers and my uh, pliers and all of my tools that I use a lot right there where I can get to them. So it makes it very handy uh, to have them. I think uh, that pretty much covers the things I would say about the, the bench itself. Uh, the second thing, I guess, would be to talk about the white elephant in the room, and that would be a bench vise. Uh, a vise is a tool you almost cannot do without. You may well, ha well have one already in uh, wherever you're working now. Uh, about a four-inch heavy-duty vise is, is what you want to get. Uh, I took, I got this one from the cheap Chinese tool store, I mean from uh, Harbor Freight. And uh, as you can tell, it talks to you as you come out. The first thing I did was it has the uh, serrated jaws. I took those off and I reversed them. So I have steel, smooth steel jaws on the vise uh, so that I can hold things without putting the pattern into them. The next thing you do with the vise is you make some soft jaws. Those will fit in there. They will hold things without uh, uh, rifle barrels, whatever, round. It doesn't matter. They'll crush to uh, get around them. And that keeps from marring anything at all. And I've got several sets of soft jaws. Um, I've got one with some... Uh, um, What do you call it? That stuff. Yeah. Is it leather? No. Well, you can put leather on them. You can put rubber on them. These particular ones are felt. They're hard felt pads. Uh, again, to be able to hold things uh, in the vise, hold them securely so you can work on them. The other thing about having the bench high is when you go to work on a piece, it's right here. It's right where I want it to be, where I can watch what I'm doing. I can see what's happening as I'm working on it. Uh, I'm, I'm all for a bench that is high enough to where it keeps the work in front of you, where you can concentrate on it. I see you have a, a light there too. Um. I also have a light that's uh, got a magnifying glass in the middle. Not something you necessarily have to have, but good lighting would be... Good lighting, uh, there's no such thing as, as, as enough light. Uh, quite frankly, we... Uh, uh, often don't use it. If I need the magnifying glass, I've got it right there and I can magnify the work as I'm, as I'm doing it. I use this vise a lot to hold uh, my checkering cradle. Use the light in the magnifying glass as I'm, as I'm working on the checkering. And again, it's right here. I'm not bending over to see it up close, to watch it up close. It's right where I'm comfortable. And to me, if you're going to spend a lot of time at the bench, that's more important than a lot of the other things that people will tell you to do. Uh, you want to keep it as comfortable as possible so that you don't get to where you just don't want to work on it. Because your back hurts. Alright, thank you for watching this video. If you've liked what you've just seen, we're going to be doing some more of them. We'll cover a lot of the basic tools uh, to get started. Uh, just stay tuned. Watch the uh, Alpha Charlie Papa channel and we'll have some more ideas for you. For now, happy trails. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.